All right, folks, looks like we're holding steady here at around 56 individuals. Uh, glad you could join us today. If you're here for the SSIS Coffee Talk regarding court actions, uh, the court action screen for QRTP court approval related to the Family First Prevention Services Act, you are in the right spot. Get my agenda up here. So in today's uh, webinar, we're gonna be um, showing you links to our Family First Prevention Services Act website through the Minnesota Child Welfare Training Academy. Uh, we'll have a link to upcoming webinars that um, I will throw in the chat for you as well. And then I'll also throw in the link to our QRTP court approval and SSIS tutorial draft. Uh, a link to the webinar completion form and a link to uh, the policy and SSIS help desk emails. So I'm gonna flash forward to the next slide. The next slide is, I'm gonna go a little bit out of order here. We're gonna have a link to policy, the links to the policy and SSIS desk, help desk emails. Um, for information regarding uh, residential service requirements, you have the email for our foster care unit at the top. For information regarding prevention service requirements, you can contact the safety unit with the email that you see on the second bullet point. Uh, because our webinar today goes over court actions, uh, the previous webinar regarding policy will um, uh, will illustrate a lot of information about courts and the children's justice initiative. So if you have any questions regarding court processes, you can also funnel your questions to that email that you see uh, cji at courts.state.mn.us. And of course, as always, uh, we will go ahead and give you the SSIS help desk email. However, um, SSIS mentors are directed to email your questions or concerns to the help desk but that information is provided for our mentors who are participating today. Um, Heidi is not with us today and she's usually my backup person to throw the links into the chat for you. So what I'm gonna do really quick here is I'm just gonna stop presenting and then I'm gonna get those links for you into the chat. I can do them, Eric, if you want. Oh, that's really helpful. Thank it's you. Anna. Yep. Thanks, okay. Anna. Okay. All right, folks, um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen regarding the uh, Qualified Residential Treatment Program Court Approvals in SSIS. And hopefully you can all see the SSIS screen. And Brenda, the links for the webinar are coming uh, to you soon. Thanks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first find the work group that I'm gonna work from to enter this particular court action information under my case list. And I'm going to open this particular work group in a new window with the case. A um, couple of housekeeping details as well. If you have any questions regarding today's presentation, you can go ahead and throw them into the Q&A down at the bottom of your screen. And then uh, before we get started, also, I'm going to go over and review a little bit of policy information before I show you the SSIS functionality. Anna, are you finding those links okay? I can just go ahead and do it. <laughs> Sorry, guys out there. So this is our Family First Prevention Services website. It's going to give you all kinds of information uh, related to uh, the webinars that you've been seeing over the last couple of months related to FFPSA. 
Then I'm gonna show you the webinar completion form. You can complete this at the end of the webinar for proof that you attended today's session. I'm gonna throw that into the chat. Uh, we have the QRTP court approvals tutorial draft that I created for today's webinar. I'll also go ahead and throw that into the chat for you. Sorry, I seem a little out of sync here today, but uh, we'll get it. We'll get it straightened out. All right. So back to the policy information that I was going to share for you before we get into the SSIS functionality. So within 60 days of placing children in a QRTP under Minnesota statutes chapters 260C or 260D or counties with Title IV-E agreement with corrections, including umbrella counties, agencies must obtain a court order approving or disapproving QRTP placement based on reports to the court prepared by the responsible social service agency, qualified individuals assessment of children, out of home placement plans updated with information and included in assessments of children by qualified individuals and other information provided by pertinent parties. If the court approves the QRTP placement, it reviews the required information about the children's placement at every hearing while in QRTP placement. If the court does not approve QRTP placement, children must be moved to another placement consistent with their best interest within 30 days. Caseworkers document the court's approval or disapproval of the QRTP placement in the out-of-home placement plans, as well as on the court action screen that you are about to see in SSIS. When children are under tribal court jurisdiction in an initiative tribe, it's tribal court approves or dis disapproves of the QRTP placements. The modifications to the court action screen for the QRTP 60-day court approval functionality allows the user to record whether the court hearing was the new hearing type of QRTP placement review. It allows users to record whether the court hearing included a QRTP placement review in addition to another hearing type and record the QRTP review type. And the system displays a message for the user that the QRTP placement approval tab is required when the review tab or the review type, my apologies, is selected as 60 day court approval. And you'll get to, you'll get acquainted with the screen here and all of that lingo here in just a second. So I'm gonna to navigate to uh, the work group that I want to create this court action from. And just to go over, when you open a case with a uh, case in a new window, um, you can create the court actions folder uh, from a couple of different locations. If you have the case detail folders, if you have the case details folder, you can create court actions there or you can navigate to the individual's participant node and create court actions there. I'm gonna to navigate to Stacy Snow's court action folder under her participant tab, located here under CMH screenings and assessments, you'll find the court actions folder. Now, if I click on court actions, I can then create an action menu in one of several ways. Cindy, I'll get those links back to you in just a second here. Um, I can create a, a court action uh, menu by selecting or right-clicking on court actions or selecting the lightning bolt or the action menu underneath the, the display screen. So I'm just gonna right-click on court actions and select new court action. Go ahead and throw these links in the chat again one more time. Because I think I sent them to the hosts and panelists and that is not very helpful to you all out there who are participating in this webinar.
And I'll have Anna just double check. Thanks, Anna. Okay, so the new QRTP placement approval tab can be found under the court actions folder as I have already described. Um, I just wanna throw a hint out there that a placement does not have to exist in order to create and fill out this screen. But if the placement is made, return to the screen and link that placement to the applicable fields. The regarding section will auto populate with the child's name when you create the court action from that particular participants participant node. Um, however, if you were under the case details folder and you created a new uh, court action, you would have to select the individual that uh, this court action is pertaining to. Um, however, we don't have to do that because like I said, we created under the participant. The next field we have is for court type. For QRTP placements, we're either gonna select juvenile or tribal from the drop-down list. So I'm gonna click that and select juvenile. Then we have the petition type field and the corresponding filing date. We're gonna choose the appropriate petition type. I'm gonna click the drop-down just to show you what displays. When the court type field is either juvenile or tribal, the following are available petition types, uh, contributing to chips, chips, adoption, delinquency or petty offense, permanency, and DDED report. For today's training, we'll go ahead and select chips. When I select chips, notice that the petition detail is grayed out. However, if I selected an option under the petition type that would warrant information to be entered in the, into the petition detail field, uh, you would go ahead and select that corresponding information in the petition detail dropdown. I'm just gonna enter today's file date next to the petition type. The hearing type and corresponding date field, we're gonna choose the correct hearing type from the dropdown list. A new hearing type of QRTP placement review has been added to the dropdown list for selection. Uh, you can select QRTP placement review if the hearing is solely for QRTP placement review. So that's going to be down here toward the bottom of this drop down. If I were to select QRTP placement review because this hearing is solely related to the QRTP placement review, you'll also see a new field underneath that says hearing also included a QRTP placement review. The box for that is disabled. However, if this was for emergency protective services or the EPC hearing and information related to the QRTP placement review was a part of the EPC, then the checkbox will enable for users to select. For training today, I am going to select the new QRTP placement review. Notice how when I selected either QRTP placement review or put a check mark in this checkbox, the next field under QRTP review type becomes required. When I click the drop down for the QRTP review type, I see a couple of selections. I see a 60 day court approval or an ongoing review. If I were to select the 60 day court approval, then the new field up here at the top, QRTP placement approval tab, this information will become required. And we'll go over that information here in just a little bit. So for training today, again, I'm gonna select the 60 day court approval so I can show you the functionality of that new QRTP placement approval tab. And then in normal circumstances, you would select the order or disposition. I'm gonna backtrack a little bit to our hearing type and I'm gonna put in that corresponding date. I'll just make a selection here for training purposes again, and then I'll just throw the date into that corresponding field as well. 
I just want to point out that the child findings tab is still uh, does, still does have Title IV E implications. So users will continue to enter the uh, information on the child findings tab as they always have. If a placement or a continuous placement has been entered into SSIS, then users would choose the uh, appropriate continuous placement if there are more than one from the dropdown. And then we have the fields for the best interest statement, reasonable or active efforts statement, reasonable or active efforts to finalize permanency. All of this information uh, is still required based on how you answer these particular questions. But this particular training is just going over the changes and enhancements related to the QRTP placement approval. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna navigate over to the QRTP placement approval uh, tab. And again, this is going to be required if your selection is 60 day court approval. If you try to navigate away, you'll get a warning that this tab is, is required. Um, as with all of the newly enhanced screens related to FFPSA, the screen, the detail screen always starts out with help text and that's provided uh, to um, workers to provide guidance on the use of this screen. The QRTP placement, if a placement has been entered under the placements, locations, and absence folder under your permanency folder, you'll be able to use that um, in the QRTP placement dropdown. And I believe that only QRTP with or placements with an applicable certification of QRTP will appear in the QRTP placement dropdown. So I have preloaded a QRT, an applicable certification of QRTP underneath my permanency folder. And that's why you're seeing that multi-column dropdown with that placement. And we'll go ahead and bring that into view into that field. And then we have the court approval within 60 days of each QRTP placement. That's just a new label um, that allow that kind of signifies the follow-up questions uh, on the remainder of this detail screen. So we have the decision of the court in regard to the QRTP placement, the user will select either approved or disapproved. And then they will select the QRTP decision date. Again, this can be manually entered or uh, users can choose from the date picker uh, using that drop down feature. Once the information has been saved regarding the court hearing, the child findings, and the QRTP placement approval, a user can save that information. Again, if the placement or the continuous placement haven't been entered in SSIS, users can return to this screen and bring that information into this field. There are a couple of data cleanup messages that will be associated with this new functionality. For example, uh, one of the messages that might that will appear um, for workers is that QRTP placement approval tab is required on a court action record when um, the QRTP placement review option is selected or the hearing also included the QRTP placement review. And the help description associated with that would be that the QRTP placement approval tab is required to be completed on the court action records where a QRTP review type selected what I just basically said, uh, that the hearing type was either QRTP placement review or the check, bark, check box was marked next to hearing also included the QRTP placement review. This is applicable to all counties, regions, and tribal agencies. And it is not required, that data cleanup will not be required to close a work group. However, it will follow the person. The next data cleanup message that I'd like to talk to you about is the message that will display QRTP placement with a start date 
of a certain month, day, and year is not linked to a court action record with the QRTP placement approval. So again, we are referring to this field here. If you are filling out these screens and the, and the placement has not been entered into SSIS, the, uh, within 20 calendar days, this uh, data cleanup message would appear if you were to try to close the work group. Um, alluding to users needing to fill to put this information into the QRTP placement field. Now, the only time that users will see that data cleanup is if the placement has been entered under the permanency folder and if the placement is linked to this QRTP assessment screen. And it doesn't look like I have a QRTP assessment loaded here. So just give me one second here. So if there isn't a QRTP placement linked to this QRTP assessment, or let me backtrack. If the QRTP placement is linked on the QRTP assessment screen, as you can see here, but it is not linked to your new court action, then you're going to get that data cleanup message that that field needs to be, that link needs to be created. <laughs> here under the QRTP placement. So this is just kind of a walkthrough of that court action screen. Uh, you would fill it out as you normally would, but there is some additional information related to the QRTP placement. And I just wanted to know if there are any additional questions that you might have related to this new functionality. All right, so I'm gonna go back and I'm going to throw the links into the chat again. This link that I'm throwing in there right now is to the Family First Prevention Services Act website through the Training Academy. This link is the webinar completion form. And this is a link to the tutorial on the Qualified Residential Treatment Program uh, court approval in SSIS. So hopefully you are all seeing that now. Um, I did get a question in the last webinar about whether or not um, one thing that I do want to show you actually now that I'm thinking about it, so don't go away too too fast here, is that some new documents have been added under chronology that pertain to uh, the report to the court. So I'm going to navigate to my chronology folder. And I have the uh, report to the court loaded here, just so we could take a quick look at that. Um, you would find the report to the court QRTP addendum by creating that new document and then searching for the document under reports to the court. So I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what the setup screen looks like for that QRTP 
addendum. Uh, the workgroup information will populate. You will uh, put each uh, report to the court as child specific. So that information will populate here and then we will uh, choose initial review of QRTP placement um, or ongoing review from the request for the court findings for QRTP placement. And then um, if the placement or if the family and permanency team has convened, that information will populate on this setup tab as well. And then you have the RTF document tab where you can make edits by selecting the blue editor button here and then going in and answering uh, the following questions. So are there any questions on the court actions enhancements or the report to the court QRTP addendum? There's also a new addendum for voluntary placement as well and follows similar functionality that I just outlined for locating the QRTP placement addendum. Okay, well, it's pretty quiet out there today. So I will assume again that um, you understood this training or that you will have questions in the future regarding everything that we're discussing. <laughs> um, definitely appreciate all the work that you guys do. I know this is a lot of information uh, that you're taking on uh, within the last couple of months. And I appreciate your attendance in these webinars. If you do have any follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to send them our way. I'm gonna show you that contact information once again before we head out today. And um, if you don't have any questions or concerns, uh, then please feel free to log off. And thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate you.